Hello and welcome to another edition of After the Whistle. This is our first season and episode five of the podcast. Today is September 11th, 2019. It was 18 years ago since the attacks of 9-11 and my heart goes out to everyone who lost loved ones during this awful time. I hope everyone will always remember and honor the ones that we lost. On today's podcast, we're going to recap the Kingston Austin East game from last Friday night where Kingston lost 36 to 22, but had an awesome performance by the Kingston Yellow Jackets and fought all the way to the end. Also on the show, we're going to recap the UT BYU game where UT lost in double overtime 29 26 to the Cougars. As always, we have a special guest on the show we'll be talking to later on in the show. We hope that you will stay tuned and listen to another episode of After the Whistle. Welcome to After the Whistle. I'm your co-host Jody Maduski alongside Brad Luttrell, Jeff Huffman, Guys, before we recap the Kingston Austin East game, let me go over the scores from week three last Friday night. Cofield defeated Harriman 36 to seven. It was Midway all over Oakdale 33 to eight. Oliver Springs shut out Rockwood 10 to nothing. Alcoa blanked Scott County 42 to rip. And Gatlinburg Pittman defeated Northview 41 to six. Guys, let's turn our Attention now to the uh, Kingston-Austin East game last Friday night. Uh, Guys, great performance by Kingston. We came up a little bit short, but uh, big, big improvement from the week before. Um, They moved the ball at will up and down the field. A lot of players contributed to Friday night's uh, defeat, but, man, they played well, Brad. And, uh, hey, things look good going down the road now for Kingston. Yeah, like I said, Jody, big improvement from last week. The offense got going. Uh, Kingston implemented a two-quarterback system, played Trey Schultz and Kane Collins, and uh, both kids had uh, successful drives and led the team down uh, for scoring drives. And uh, Elijah Hill had a really big game, 130-something yards rushing. Uh, Hunter Brackett scored a touchdown, had some big gains. Uh, Overall, the running game was really, really good. Offensive line had a good push. And – Defensively, we struggled a little bit. So getting Austin East on the ground, missed some tackles. That's led to some of the big plays for Austin East. But uh, overall, guys, uh, I think some good things happen for the rest of the season going forward. And they, that's something they can build on. Absolutely, Brad. Uh, like you said, it was a great game Friday night. Kingston, I thought, like Jody said earlier, I think it was the best game they played all season. Um, Austin East, tough opponent on the road. Tie game 22-22 midway through the fourth quarter. Austin East scored a couple of touchdowns late to win, but and, uh, I think that game showed a lot for Kingston. Uh, went on the road. Like you said, the offensive line showed massive improvement from first game to third to, yes, the, to this game. Um, rushing for Willa over 200 yards. Big game for the Jackets. Um, hopefully they can keep that momentum going forward this week against Rockwood. Okay, Brad, let's uh, talk about some of the highlights from the game Friday night. Several – Kids on the Kingston football team contributed, and uh, we'd like to give them a, a special recognition. Yeah, Jody, uh, I know Will Moore, he had a big interception in the game when the game was closed. He had a big pick. And uh, also, when the when Austin East scored made 28-22, Kingston got back down there again and had a chance to take the lead. Uh, had to go for it on fourth down and didn't get it, but just a great effort. Also, uh, you know, they hit that pass with Zane Ryan's again. They did that in the Harriman game. Uh, that's the second time they've hit that pass this year. And, guys, I, I say it all the time. In high school football, unless you're playing a team like Alcoa, the middle of the field is wide open. I'd like to see them, you know, use that play some more. Also, defensively, guys, uh, Bradley Lurie led the team in tackles with seven. Uh, Preston Quiet had six stops, and Don Dana had five. So, uh, just a good effort overall by Kingston, and just need to keep improving, and I think there'll be a lot of wins going forward. Yeah, Brad, I think uh, the way they played Friday night, they keep that momentum going. They travel to Rockwood this Friday night. Uh, Huffman, man, I, I see uh, if they keep that momentum going, it, it's going to be hard for the Tigers to compete. No question at all. Um, with the offensive line showing what they did Friday night, with the running game, with Elijah Hill and Hunter Brackett, and the 
two-headed monster at quarterback with Trey Schultz and Kane Collins. I look for Kingston to go to Rockwood and keep the momentum going and come out there with a win Friday night. One other note we, we need to mention about Marcus Rose had a pretty good game rushing. He, he went out of the game late, uh, took a pretty good hit, but I did talk to his dad earlier today and said he's all right, been cleared to play, so he's going to be back to play um, uh, this Friday night. Yeah, Mark, Got Marcus, he's had a good year so far, very solid in every game, been very consistent. Yeah, sorry about that, Brad, but yeah. Guys, great recap. Uh, we've got a special guest that we're going to talk to in our next segment we're excited about, so we'll be right back. Welcome to the After the Whistle. I'm your co-host Jody Maduski alongside Brad Luttrell, Jeff Huffman. We're pleased to be joined by senior fullback and nose guard, number 18, Hunter Brackett. Hunter, thanks for being on the show with us today. Thanks for having me. Man, talk a little bit about the game last Friday night. You had a monster game. You had close to 100 yards rushing at the fullback position. Nice couple of runs that uh, kept the momentum going for Kingston. Talk about the, you guys did come up a little bit short, but talk about that confidence that you'll take with yourselves when you guys travel down to Rockwood. You know, I think we played pretty great last Friday, even though we lost, but uh, our line had a good push up front. And uh, it was a major improvement from last Friday. We were unrecognizable from the Oliver Springs game. We just had a massive, massive boost in confidence and played hard. Sidelines were pumped, just different atmosphere. Okay, Brad, you got a couple questions for Hunter? Yeah, Hunter, uh, you played on both sides of the ball this year. Uh, like Jody said, fullback and nose guard. Talk about what you had to do in the spring and summertime to condition yourself to be able to play on both sides of the ball. You know, we uh, did a lot of conditioning over the summer and, and workouts and uh, had major improvements. Uh, I know I got a little bit more in shape than I was last year and got a lot stronger during the offseason. Tell us a little bit about running up that hill over at Brentwood. Uh, I, I, you know, I hear some stories, and uh, I hear you guys uh, enjoy that run, and 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 probably going to do it again here real real soon. What do you think about that run you guys do? I mean, it, it is fun. We usually have a pool party afterwards. Uh, nice, but uh, it's something I won't be able to do again with a team. That's kind of that kind of puts me down. But I'm senior year. Looking forward, looking forward to a great season. Huffman, you got a couple questions? Yeah, uh, Hunter, uh, Friday night, county rival game, Kingston Rockwood, always a big game. Tell us about what some of the keys are Friday night for Kingston to go down to Rockwood and come out with a victory. Well, if we play like we did last Friday, we'll, well, with the uh, same confidence and momentum that we have, we'll, we'll play good. And the key, one of the keys to winning this Friday would be shut down number 12, Nate Brackett from Rockwood, the quarterback. Uh, shut him down, then it should shut down their team. Just give us, give us the win. Sounds good. Good luck Friday night, Hunter. Uh, I got a, a couple more questions for you. Um, tell me a little bit about your uh, pregame meal. What do you, what do you like to eat before you play a big football game, especially a big robbery game? Well, uh, if it's away games, we eat on Thursdays, and we don't know really what we're gonna have. But uh, on home games, we eat the same thing: chicken. Chicken, mashed potatoes, and green beans every Friday. Every hey, Friday. Can't beat that with a stick. That's, that's pretty good. That's, that's all good right. eating right there. Well, let me ask one last question. Are you a sausage or are you a bacon guy? Bacon. <laughs> good <laughs> choice. <laughs> Great choice. Hey, man, thanks for having us. We appreciate the time. Enjoyed it. Uh, good luck to you the rest of the season. Uh, take care of business Friday night. Uh, you guys played well last Friday. And uh, if you play like that again, you guys are going to win some games and set yourself up for uh, – Playoff time, so good luck to you, man. Jody, let me ask you one more thing. Yes, sir. Off here. All right, Hunter, we're going to ask you. Out of all the county rivals, Harriman, Rockwood, Oliver Springs, which which one do you dislike the most? Uh, Harriman, Harriman's up there, but I think Rockwood. Rockwood's, Rockwood's number one. Huh? I can't stand it. All right, that ain't, that's good. All right, man, good luck to you, and thanks for, thanks for being here.